My name is Andre, and uh, we're using this video to introduce to you a tool called MySocket, a service called MySocket. Um, so what is MySocket? Well, basically, it's a service that uh, allows you to make uh, services that are otherwise maybe not publicly available because they're running on your local host, on your laptop, or perhaps behind a strict uh, gateway like a firewall or a NAT service. Um, but you still have the need to make that available. And that's what MySocket provides. So in this quick demo, we're going to take a look at how you use it, how to get started, and how we make our first socket available. So the first thing to do is to visit mysocket.readthedocs.io, which is this page, and you can just easily follow along. So we'll start by creating an account um, and then making a service available. All right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, install the MySocket CTL client. That's the easiest way to use the service. So that's very easy. You could just do pip3 install MySocket CTL. I already did this, but this is kind of what that looks like. And then you have access to the tool. Um, and if you then type in MySocket CTL, you're ready to use. So you can see there's a few, few uh, commands. First, we'll use this to create the account. Then we'll start logging in. And then we do a connect. And there's some more advanced features that we'll look at later. All right, so if we go back to the quick start guide, you could see the first step is to create an account. Okay, to create an account, just copy paste that and modify the information. Change your name, your email, pick a password. And the SSH key flag is uh, important to upload your public key only. Uh, and that's what we'll use to authenticate uh, you later on. Okay, so let's do that. So in this case, I'm creating an account um, and now I should get a confirmation email. So let's see if we're getting that. There it is. So we'll click on that and now we've confirmed it. All right, so the next step is to make sure that we can log in. So we'll use MySocket CTL login, use your email and password to log in. So I'm using the same email and password I used before. Et voila, and now we're logged in. The token has been stored and we can start using the service. So that's pretty quick, right? Just took us a minute or so, cool. So we'll follow along. So the next step is to make a service um, available, a service that is only reachable normally on localhost. So as an example, I'm going to use this, uh, this one-liner to start a uh, little web server on my laptop. So this starts a web server that's listening on port 8000 localhost. So let's take a look what that actually looks like. There you go. So in this case, it's just serving up a little image, says hello, but it could be your more advanced application. And it might be something that you're developing locally and you'd like to share that with your teammates or demo it to your manager or demo it to a client. And to do so, you want to do that quickly. You don't want to cont continuous like deploy it, modify it. And so you just want to show it uh, quickly like that. And that's what we're going to demo. So we're going to make this service that's running on localhost lo local 8000 publicly available. To do that, we use this command. MySocketCTL connect port 8000. I'm giving it a little name. And, and that's it. And basically what's happening right now is that the CLI tool is talking to our API um, and it's creating this global socket. Um, it's giving it a, a name, coolbird9280.edge.mysocket.io, uh, which is the name that we can now share with uh, whoever we'd like to share this with. Um, once that was done, the client is connected to the MySocket tunnel services. Um, of which there are many around the world, just there are many proxy services. So that makes sure that you're always connected to the closest server and that assures that the, the user experience is as optimal as it can be. And now that we're connected, uh, we should be able to see the same service that is running on localhost. So let's take a look, copy paste that, and there you go. It's the same service that is only listening on localhost, but now all of a sudden it is shared publicly. It even as an SSL certificate, you'd see the same thing. Now, if we go back here, we can see a live stream of the logs as well. We can see who's visiting this, um, uh, the IP address, the timestamp, the path, the browser they're using, as well as the response time. So you can see here, it took about 70 milliseconds to talk between my laptop and the closest MySocket uh, server, which is pretty good. So that's how easy it was to get started. We now created an account in under a minute. We set up another, uh, we set up a socket in just a few seconds that is now globally available and everybody around the world can use this. 
Now, that was only a very quick overview. There are many things that we can do. Where we showed you an HTTP and an HTTPS socket, but we can also create TCP sockets, for example, to make your SSH port available for your Raspberry Pi services or something like that, or TLS ports for maybe RDS instances or MySQL instances um, that you'd like to tunnel back to your local host. Um, we can talk a little bit more about all, a lot of other things, uh, multiple tunnels, load balancing, and so on and so forth. But we'll save that for another time. For now, I recommend go and read the docs at mysocket.readthedocs.io or go to our website at uh, mysocket.io and get going. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Uh, maybe an interesting alternative to various VPNs or other types of services. Um, I'll continue to work on this, and I'm uh, curious about your opinion, your feedback, and ideas of how to make this better. Thank you very much.